So let's get into the albums first. James, what's your first pick? Uh, so in no particular order. Yeah, no particular um, I'm going to go with Sleep Society uh, by While She Sleeps. Um, a fantastic return by them. I uh, feel they're just getting stronger and stronger. They're really becoming a big band in terms of UK metal. And I'm so excited about their future. We've seen them grow from like the smallest of stages to now really being recognised bigger and bigger. Um, it's a fantastic album from start to finish. Um, I love this band and I love this album. Was that one of your picks as well? Yeah, it wasn't one of my picks, but yeah, I agree with it being in there. There's not really much more to say about it. Yeah, it's that was... A solid band, solid album. Yeah, that was one of the picks I had as well. Um, I think... Uh, hearing some of the new stuff live at the download pilot I know we weren't there but seeing clips of it live has elevated elevated it more I'm extremely excited purely just to see Sleep Society after seeing that at the download yeah. pilot it looks incredible and that as, an, as a set opener yeah. it's going to go off I think yeah I think it's it was just a really well balanced album of like all the different nuances that While She Sleeps have in their sound uh, one of the ones that I've picked is Architects for those that wish to exist it it was between this one and While She Sleeps, Sleep Society to make my top three. And yeah, there's not really much to say about Architects. It's a really complete album full of absolute bangers from one of the leading bands in the UK scene. It's a bit of a, a new direction for them, but I think they've absolutely nailed it. I think um, it's good that we're doing this and we've had like the months to reflect and let the album sit because I think at the time... I was a bit too wrapped up in the whole what's everyone else thinking you know because it was quite a divisive people weren't happy yeah, that they changed was. people were happy that they changed and I think when I got the idea out of my head of comparing it to the three albums before that actually yeah it is a really really good album my first pick for album of the year is The Greatest Mistake of My Life by Harding Absence um, I just adore it I think it was like I've kind of been keeping a track on my on my phone of like what we've listened to so far and like trying to kind of keep it in some sort of order of like my favourites and this went straight in at the top and hasn't moved I know we're not doing these in any particular order but this has been my favourite album it, I just was such a complete and well rounded sound and like every it felt like every detail was like very carefully chosen and thought over and decided on it's got some of the biggest choruses and the vocal performance all the way through is insane and I love it so much that's the exact reason why I've got it in one of mine as well um, came out of nowhere um, took me sideways I absolutely enjoyed it yeah. um, and that's why off the back of that we're all going to go and see them in a few months time on their tour just purely off the base of hearing this album be absolutely struck by how fantastic it is fantastically crafted really really well written great performances um it's a fantastic album from start yeah. to finish. And it I wasn't really, really I wasn't really listening to them, to them before this album, no. which feels like such a mistake now in hindsight. Would you, would you say it's the greatest mistake uh, of your life? <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> um, yeah, like something... <laughs> yes, Dad. Yeah, just high-fived over that. Something that I said in our review about it um, is like the kind of world-building that they do. It's one of those albums where you listen to it and like you're completely wrapped up in it. Where it, like once it once it goes on, I very rarely turn it's, it off. It's like quite cinematic. Off. Yeah, you could do it on a start to finish yeah, really, yeah. really easily. So yeah, it's it's a hat trick. It's yeah. one of my picks as well. Yes. Um, it's it's equally as strong instrumentally as vocally, and that says a lot because Lucas's vocal performance is phenomenal across the whole album, um, as it was on their last album as well. I've been a, unlike you two, I've been a fan of them for a little while. I knew their last album, yeah. but it's nice to see you two sort of properly getting into them and oh, yeah. being Absolutely. swept off your feet by this yeah. album back to you then James so mine I'm kind of cheating with this one a little bit I'm mixing in two EPs um, the Timeless EP and the Bloom EP from Of Mice and Men and particularly mostly the Timeless EP it's been played non-stop in my music rotations my first proper exposure to Of Mice and Men came off these EPs this year and I love them both so much and really really anticipating the third one which hasn't got a date but is going to be released later this year they've said it's just fantastically well written great performances the vocals in particular are just fantastic just some solid instrumentals um again yeah just completely took me by surprise after not listening to them 
always knowing about them. Um, absolutely fantastic, well-written songs. So yeah. Uh, my next pick is "Devil Sold His Soul" with Loss. Uh, we reviewed this a few episodes ago, and I, I think we all absolutely loved it. Mm, yeah, um, yeah. It's beautifully melodic, crushingly heavy, and I mean, if you're gonna wait ten years to release your, your next album, you may as well make it this good. Yeah, it, it was fantastically well written. Again, from start to finish, it was a fantastic album and a great introduction for me into them. So. Yeah, it was a brilliant way of the way they captured emotions on that album. A lot of different ones, like you know, from like crushing loss to like hope you know yeah it was a really well crafted album start to finish yeah Loved I it. think I think another thing that makes it a great album is that I can't really listen to one song off it without going back and listening to just the whole album in full yeah. front to back like if, if a song comes up on shuffle I've That's got, I've got yeah. to go and revisit the album again and I, I think if an album can draw you back like that then that's a good sign definitely definitely Okay, so my last pick is Kenny Hoopla with the Survivor's Guilt mixtape. I don't know, I th in the last like few years I've kind of fallen a bit out of love with pop punk and this like got me right back in it again. Um, just feels so refreshing, but like this, this like classic feel to it. Um, when we talked about it, we said like about the, the length of it and like to me that it's perfect because True. like... Mm -hmm. Because I love all the songs so much, I want to indulge in like one go, and you can when it's only eight songs. Um, I th yeah, obviously the two big singles, are Stella and Hollywood Sucks, are amazing. But it's some of the like the deeper ones. Um, Silence is also an answer, and Inside of Heaven's Mouth, especially, I just love. Yeah, I'm really excited to see like where he goes next from this. Um, and like Dan said in his in his blog recently about kind of the changes in pop punk. Kenny Hoopla is like at the forefront of like a revival for it now and I think with people like him co coming from outside of the genre into it is a good thing because it, it puts more eyes on on the scene in a way and obviously it's, he's got like a, a genuine interest in the scene as yeah, well it, it feels from, from what I understand about his background he grew up listening to yeah. pop punk and alternative music so it's it's good for him to explore that kind of area as well but what did you think? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Hit subscribe so you never miss a video, and why not check out the latest episode of our podcast? Thanks for watching.